Now we're starting the credit sequence in the first movie of what I'd call my Apocalypse Trilogy. The Thing, Prince of Darkness, and The Mouth of Madness. And sitting next to me here today is Kurt Russell. Yeah, this is fun. Check this out again. I haven't seen this movie for quite a while. Wasn't this the same year that E.T. came out? As a matter of fact, we came out two weeks after E.T. came out. That's what, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and theirs was sweet and ours was mean. <laughs> Now you're going to see in a minute the uh, the main title burn through. It's exactly the same as the original thing. Uh, we copied their logo exactly. We did this movie right after Escape from uh, New York. Didn't we? I was going to say we did Escape in 1980. Is that right? Yeah, it was released in '81. And then we did this in '81. '81. Uh, there we are, Antarctica, winter 1982, and we began the film. We shot this opening up in uh, Alaska, in the ice fields above Juneau. Were you flying that helicopter? Or? I was not. I hadn't learned to fly yet, but this, this was one of the experiences that made me want to learn. The only problem with this location was we couldn't get any beer. And so we tried to send the helicopter back down to Juneau to get beer and bring it up to us. But the, <laughs> the uh, locals didn't help you out much there. They didn't help us out too much. <laughs> At uh, the glacier in British Columbia. There we go. Oh, ma. Didn't we talk about the Vietnam uh, helicopter? Yeah, that he was a, yeah, that he, was a, that he had some experience and was probably an alcoholic now. And what was interesting about it was that here was this guy who uh, was up in Antarctica with all these other guys who had their own problems for wanting to be up there. But this guy had to get a little further away than most. <laughs> so here's a man with a problem in his chest board. But right there, the dog ducks because the helicopter is really only about five feet above him. That's amazing flying, isn't it, when you know how, how impossible it is to determine where you are. We all developed a real camaraderie working together oh, up God, in, in the middle of nowhere. We had some, some adventures that I think we really can't talk about here <laughs> on this laser disc <laughs> for fear. We had a hell of a time just getting there on that bus, oh. I can tell you that much. At the time this movie was released, this would have been... Uh, in June of 82, it was considered a very frightening and horrifying and repellent film, but now we look at it, and yeah, it it's kind of a straightforward, uh, tough, hard-hitting action picture with a monster in it. Really, our concern was about the paranoia aspects of the story. It was we such wanted... a great story about, about that, wasn't it? Twelve guys and finally getting, and knowing each other so well, and then finally getting to a point George, where you, you don't okay? know. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sometimes we do uh, fades to white, whiteouts and sometimes we do blackouts and uh, depending on the mood we, we did a lot of improvisation and rewriting when we got up to yeah. British Columbia to try to clarify yeah. some points in the picture and here and comes Wil Wilford <laughs> Will Brimley who is one of the great all-time people a long way from those oatmeal commercials here isn't he? <laughs> and I have a real affection for Will he's a terrific guy I still in my wallet right now at this it? moment I have my hydrization card <laughs> I've never, I've, my, I've never felt my throat close off faster than, than that. I was near death when I got hydrized. <laughs> hydrized is basically you have to drink down Everclear, and then they light the glass on fire. It's pretty wild. Uh, what we have in the helicopter is a dual control system, and you're in one seat, and the real pilot's in the other, and he's lifting you up, and then all of a sudden gives you the controls of the helicopter, <laughs> and you see it sort of start to wobble. <laughs> It did, that ground fell away fast though. Boy, it went from uh, five feet to 5,000 feet pretty quick. Bush pilots in Alaska, and they were fearless, uh, kind of wild men. I remember the, the pilot we had in uh, Alaska offered to crash the helicopter for money. Here comes the dog. This is a, quite an amazing uh, shot. He stops, he checks out somebody in another room. He pauses, then moves, he doesn't look, look at, at us as we pull back. Look at that, yeah. Then he stops and stares. We're going to go onto the soundstage at uh, Universal, and John Lloyd's sets, I must tell you, in the mm. sequence were just gorgeous. It he, was so weird, too, because it was so hot. It was, I remember it was 105 degrees outside in Los Angeles, and it was the exact opposite of what you experience when you go into a walk-in freezer. And uh, Dean Cundy's lighting is spectacular here. The, the, uh, the value difference between the snow and the outside light and the interior lights are very moody. It's a very beautiful shot. Here you have the... Uh, a lot of contrast in Dean's lighting. I, I, he did an incredible yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. The music uh, that's, that's uh, going here is from a composer that I've been an, an admirer of, uh, Ennio Morricone. Mm -hmm. It's a full orchestral score. It's very beautiful. And now we're up to Rob Bottin's first uh, rubber effect shot. And when we all saw this on the set, we thought, oh, Lord, this is not going to work. <laughs> I heard Rob always coming in, it seemed like, with more 
more of that gel. He said, but it's going to be fine, John. As soon as I put the gel on, it's going to come to life. <laughs> in Hawks' version, they brought in this big block of ice, and the thing gets out of it. So we wanted to put a block of ice in ours. Right. You discover it in another room. This was uh, uh, perceived at the time to be uh, a film that was, uh, I, I don't know what the word is, cruel or something, but I think maybe more it was a somber, serious film. There wasn't, a, there wasn't the kind of humor that you began to see in action movies and horror films. It wasn't jokes. We were taking the characters and the story extremely serious. The characters, you know, like your character didn't make any uh, uh, ironic asides to the audience or say, or say uh, kind of heroic lines. We all played it uh, and committed to being very believable. It just created an interesting situation, though, I thought, because it, there was no uh, posturing of any kind. Uh, because there was nobody to posture for. No, you we know, were I mean, all pretty was, equal it, on it this was, show. Yeah, it was very interesting. I thought that Rob did a pretty good job with, with this uh, this creation. As you can see, Will Brimley reacting. He's he's being truthful yeah. in his reaction. I was going to say, this is one of those scenes, too, where it's, a, it's an eight-man acting contest. Who can, who can act like it smells the worst? And everybody was thinking that. And then when, it, when he pulled that thing off, it was it was pretty rugged. And interesting. How long did it take you to grow uh, that hair? In, uh, in yeah, beard? it was a long time. I, 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 it was a year or so because... Uh, I think the last movie I'd done was Escape. You already and had it already. I, I had it already, I, but I had to cut it. I remember I did that play, and I had to cut it short. Brimley, having been a real cowboy, had no problem and, and was trying to tell us what it's like to... He's just skinning a deer there. That's it. That's basically <laughs> all there is. A deer. Look at how he sells it. He kind of squishes it around yeah. and brings it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that a boy will. It's really true, though. I remember at this time, the audience was <laughs> beginning to have a tough time. Basically, what you've got in monster films is that you have a guy in a suit. You end up there. You end up in some technique. And I wanted to do a movie where you didn't have that. Right. But this was a real, real creature. I love all the interplay here of some of these guys. Is that, you, know, you just noticed Charlie looking at the dog kind of strangely. And everybody had their own little thing where they, they gave you a little bit of story just sometimes with, with the way they behaved. Because uh, the actors, were, you guys were so committed to character. The, yeah. You were so was, committed yeah. to it, telling the story. And now he start, they all start barking. We're going to start into our effects. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> Crack it open. Here it comes. Bang now. Yeah. There it goes. Cheap trick. <laughs> off to go the dogs. And uh, here come the whips. Rob is... There he goes. Thumbs it's up. playing on his mind. That's why he's up here. That's right. He's, he's getting he's the beard. Trying to figure out what's going on. That doesn't sound right. And I love the way you played this character, which was extremely real and a, and a kind of low-key guy. I thought he was uh, really terrific. Took took charge when it needed to be done. But uh, that was a fun idea too of, of being to play a character who was not uh, was not Mr. Fabulous from the top. He wasn't Mr. Big. He wasn't the guy who was going to take care of the situation. He was somebody who was going to be sort of forced into it. Some of the Stan Winston effects are about to take place. That's uh, when Rob was busy. Uh, trying to pull off the schedule. You had used the flamethrower. After lunch, uh, there you were standing with bandages on your face and the crew around you and you said, John, I got burned, man. I can't work anymore today. And I had to stare at everybody's face to see where they, I know they're kidding me, but where is it? I know everybody was pretty good. It was a pretty elaborate scheme. It took, took getting to the whole crew and a half was an hour great. makeup. It was great. You look like the invisible man, just these eyes showing. It was fantastic. He told me, Al, you know it. Stinks when you open those things up. I had once asked Will when he was doing a scene, I said, boy, that's an incredible performance. I said, what are you thinking about? He says, oh, like picking up my laundry. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's a scene for you that you had to do with 12 people standing around a table after, on, after the previous scene of 12 people standing around a table. And you've got to somehow find, make it interesting for the audience and different. This, this to me is a, would be the, the most difficult stuff as a director. I just don't know what I'd do here. I, I always was, and see how you were going to break this up, how you're going to move the camera and stuff, because there's just nowhere to go. We're looking at videotapes of, of the Norwegian camp. I'm there someplace in that videotape, okay, uh, somewhere. This is something we shot up in British Columbia. Now you're coming up and looking down yeah, this, a real glacier. This, yeah, this was, uh, this was amazing, because as I remember this, this was about 400 feet above the ground, and if we didn't know exactly where that next step was, you, you literally couldn't tell the difference between the next step and 500 feet down. And you would have been weird. gone, yeah. yeah. 